Okay, baby, for the second, it's nobody wants me. Oh my. What can this little boy be thinking, right? There's no way nobody wants him because he's alive. Uh, the title is, for the second, Nobody Wants Me. Nobody wants me. I'm leaving home. I'll be like a hermit and live on my own. I could sleep in a tent in a dry desert land and ride in a camel across the hot sand. I could go to the North Pole to live on the ice and play with a polar bear. That would be nice. Or find a deep jungle and live in a tree with parrots and monkeys. I'm sure they'd like me. But wait, someone's calling. I've got to go home. Somebody wants me. I can't live alone. There's Mama and my Papa and my sister makes three. I really would miss them and they would miss me. Oh, so he was going for a walk and being like, nobody wants me. But no, everybody wants him. Because that's the brother of the house, right? They'd be surely sad without the brother of the house. Alright, so... We're going to start... This up again. Because we were on the three aunts. Remember that story? We read this story about the three aunts. We did the half chicken here as well. We did Sleeping Beauty. I wonder what story we were actually on. We did the golden basket, right? The angel. The jungle book. Alright, so I think that we're actually on the golden basket. So we are back to this book, the children's literature book. The illustrated treasury of the children's literature. This is a good book. All right, The Golden Basket. Celeste stood on her right, Melisandy close to her left, and the center stood on a platform behind her desk, which was crumbed with bills and slips of paper, was Madame Tor. Mulan. The little girls looked deeply into her eyes, and Madame Tor Mulan felt the tender pressures of four little hands. They straightened their lace on their collars and wound up her wristwatch, and at last she took off her glasses and said, Yes, he may go. But he must do his history first. Down the stairs came a determined voice. The history of Badgers begins in the ninth century with Baldwin of the Iron Arm, so called because he also appeared in armor and even slept in it. In eight in eight sixty he married Judith, daughter of Charles the Bald, King of France who conferred the providence of Flanders upon his son-in-law. Baldwin died in 879 and was succeeded by his son, Baldwin the Bald. The little girls told Madame Tourmalon that they had never heard better history. Every date was absolutely correct. And so it was arranged that tomorrow, the day Mr. Cogshell had to go to Bushels, to Bushels, Mensa Tor Milan would go with Jan and the two little girls to have a look at the boat. You may have the day off, said Madame to Jan, but before you go, the garden has to be carried out and watered. This garden was planted in the small boxes with handles to carry them. It moved in and out of the house every day and was made up for four little hedges of ivy, two bay trees, and two gardenias. 
These boxes were placed around a plot in front of the hotel, and within the happy frame stood tables and chairs, and awning covered, and awning covered them. Early the next morning, all this was finished. Jan brought a hose from the kitchen and connected it to the faucet on the outside of the hotel. In a little while, Madame Tourmalon came to inspect the dropping garden, and behind her came Jan's father. Monsieur Tourmalon wore plain clothes. He looked like somebody else until he spoke and said, I am ready. He held a thin cane and balanced it, a little hat on top of his head. The hat seemed to slip and he constantly reached for it. He was ill at ease, filling for an apron that was not there, going through on a costume pockets and twisting his watch chain. He held his cane like a lady or a carving knife, pointed up instead of down. Madame came and kissed her hand here, Papa, take my watch. Yours is broken. Monsieur Tourmalon and the children started, stared to cross the crumbling square. Stared to stared to cross the the cobbled square. Their shadows ran around them as they turned into the street of the pelicans. Suddenly, Papa thought of something. He walked back to the corner where Madame was still looking out of the window. He shouted to her, How does he want the first tonight? Oh, how does he want the fish tonight, Monsieur in number eight? Butter with parsley, answered Madame, with, with pumice, scoffed, asked Monsieur. Yes, came the answer, with pumice, scoffs. What time? At seven, they will eat. We must be back at five, then. Yes, at five, Papa, fine. Au revoir, ma'am. Pate chou? Mon pate chou, my little cabbage, was Madame's name for Major Tourmalon, but she used it only in a tender moment, never in business. Major Tourmalon had taken along two small packages, a little respite. He expanded in case we all got hungry, and I brought a small bottle of wine for myself. I wonder, said Major Tourmalon, whether it would not be nicer to go out to the windmills or watch the swans or perhaps take a carriage and ride around a little, ride around a little. Oh, no, no, the little girls came near and looked at Major Tourmalon. He melted immediately. He came hurried. Jan was far ahead. He opened up the little door to the garden, and there was the boat. Not a toy, but a little barge made of a real wood, heavy and solid. It must have a name, said Jan, and I thought it would be nice to call it... Melisande, Melisande, on one side, and Castet on the other. Let us christen it right away, right now. Papa took a little bottle away from his eager son. Later, he said, first let us see if it is really is a boat that is, can it swim, with the colored piece of chalk. Malzavan wrote the name on the side of Castay on the other. Later the names would be painted on properly, and now came the big moment. Jan rolled a few round logs under the boat while his father held up one end. The little girls carried the oars. A man came down the canal in a rowboat, and they waited to let him pass. Now, Papa, you push in the center, Malzanon on the right, Castile on the left. One, two, three, oh. There she was with Jan sitting on the little bench in the center. It was a boat, he had made it himself, and it was more interesting and wonderful than anything 
that floated and called itself the ship. Jan pulled on the right oar. The craft obeyed and came close to the edge of the canal, where Papa held it. Was it safe? One small pearl of water squeezed itself into the boat. It ran around and roasted in a corner and rested in a corner. No other drop followed it, and the boat is watertight. Now they can get in. Mausoleum and Caste in front. Papa, will you take the seat at the back? I will row for the first half hour. The bottle, Papa, and don't forget the lunch. Mausoleum, the camera. Caste, you are sitting on my side of the boat. Mausoleum, look at the name. Here, there has there ever been a boat in which people have not tried to change places, but even that could be done, and now we are off. To the left, ladies and gentlemen, is the Church of St. Severe. We have seen it often, and even from a boat, but it was never as beautiful as now. The bridge was, the bridge was never as beautiful as now, are going under to the port of Des Augustine, and over there is the quail of Ro Rosira. The followed with the green cap, which is starting at, uh, which is staring at us, is my classmate, Peter Gaster. Is everyone watching us? Would they all like to have a boat like this? I guess they would. Pierre is going away and make believe he has not even seen it. Melzelaine, will you take a picture of Jan? Now hold still. Don't row and look this way. Click. We have it. Here comes the most beautiful of all the bridges with St. Napoleon. Or St. Neponic standing in the center of it, and there coming over the bridge is Major, the mayor of Burgess, Major to Milan, the humble prospector of the chief of the painter D. Orr. Saw him first. He forgot that he was in a boat on the water. He stood up and with one wide sweep of his arm reached for his hat and bowed deeply. Major the Maver also reached for his hat. He held in mid air for a second and then dropped it. His face became a Major of an accident that had taken place below. Without a moment's hesitation, he cleared the railing of the, bri of the bridge and leaped into the canal to join Castile and Milan. Jan and Major tore Milan, who had disappeared under the boat as it upset and threw as little girls in a wide circle over and threw the little girls in a wide circle over the head of the sinking prospector of painter D. Orr. There sailed their sailor hats had come off and fallen into the frigid hands of the two swans that tried to get away. The birds raced under the bridge with them and the two robins with two golden names of the two of a British battleship trailed behind them. There was much confusion, confusion and much gar gargling. There were many bubbles, and then everyone disappeared unharmed. The canal is shallow. The water reached to the elbow of Major Tour Milan, and the recess of the Lungeon of Honor, and the Battle the buttonhole of his extraordinary the mayor and to the ears of the children. The boat was floating upside down. Two men were busy getting in and out of the water. The crowd gathered a sergeant of the police wore in a little book wrote in a little book the swan sat frigid under frightened under the bridge and read inside the hats. Herod's L L T D London which, of course, they did not understand. Major, the mayor, I believe this is your hat, my own. There was you caught it, Mazlan. And my cane, be quick, Jan, it's floating away. The lunch is under the boat and the bottle at the bottom. 
too bad, but let it go, because they were in the habit of greeting each other on the streets. Major Tour Milan and Major Van Dor Ventet bowed to each other in the water, wished each other a good afternoon, and in parting, raised their dripping hats in a polite goodbye. Okay. That was the story for today. People trying to be polite to each other. That's always a good thing. Baby cage, let's do. We sit and watch the rain as it falls from the sky. And we are glad to be inside where it is warm and dry. Oh yes, I do love the rain. It keeps the earth so clean and helps the pretty flowers grow from the mountains to the streams. Swing low, sweet chariot, coming forth to carry me home. Swing low, sweet chariot come on forth and carry me home well i looked over jordan and what did i see coming forth to carry me home a band of angels coming after me coming forth and carry me home swing low sweet chariot come on forth to carry me home swing low sweet chariot come on forth and carry me home well sometimes i'm up and sometimes i'm down come on forth to carry me home but still I feel my soul is having me bound. Come on forth and carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot, come on forth to carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot. Come and forth to carry me home now if you get there before I do you come and forth to carry me home Tell all my friends I'll be coming there to you Come and forth and carry me home swing low Sweet chariot Come and forth to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot. Come and forth and carry me home. I'll be coming home, coming home, coming home to you. Come and forth to carry me home. You know my word is good. You know my word is true. Come and forth. And carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot, come and forth to carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot, come and forth to carry me home. You know that I love, I love, I love you. Come and forth to carry me home. You know my word is good, you know my word is true. Come and forth and carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot, come and forth to carry me home, swing low. Sweet chariot, come and forth and carry me home. Karina, baby, I love you and I miss you, honey. Let's do... Let's do Lila Tove, baby. Lila Tove, and good night to you. Lila Tove, may your dreams come true. 
We see my love told me Israel protect you throughout the nights until we reach the morning lights. Karina baby, you are a part of Beholda Tov. You are part of the link of every generation. You are part of something beautiful. And I love you and I miss you, honey. Like Papa always used to say, Mama's Papa's son, Papa's my moon, and you are most definitely our rainbow baby, and we both love you, baby. We both love you so much. Mama and Papa just have to find a way to work together. Alright? It's gonna be okay. It's not okay right now, but it will be. I love you, and I miss you, and I can't wait to see you.